take the time out of what I know is free and busy days of lives to come down here and spend some time with your peers, learning about what's going on in the industry, learning how, you know, frankly, you can get better at everything that you do. Um, I'd like to thank the ISSA for Tokiana, because these conferences, believe it or not, don't just organize themselves. Uh, there, there's a whole lot of work and pain and effort and late nights that go into pulling together an event like this. You don't just go out and you know, call a hike and say, hey, we're going to have a few friends over. Uh, you don't make that happen for us. I'd like to thank the speakers for the exact same reason. I mean, pretty much every, everyone who's going to talk today probably spent a fair amount of time out of their nights, their weekends, and pulling together we're going to be some great talks. Uh, you know, I'm hopefully going to be able to sneak in on a few of those. Uh, to talk on, on DNS security, for example. I don't know if uh, you all saw Bruce Schneier wrote, I think it was last week, about how somebody is systematically figuring out how to break the internet. And uh, so, so understanding what uh, we can and can't secure and defend at uh, a lot of structural level is going to be increasingly important in the years ahead. Uh, there's the uh, workload security and container security. I think that's going to be a great talk. And that's somewhere, if you don't think that's going on in your organization, unless your organization is small enough, you know everyone, you're probably just not looking hard enough. Um, have a chance, you can probably get enough at least plus one compliance to where you're going to be able to go in and have a conversation with those guys before they start doing things that are going to be headaches in your lives down the road. Uh, the, the casting talk, if you're not thinking about casting, you should be. Um, yeah, I'd love to have a conversation with anybody who wants to talk about casting because that's kind of the, the great green field for, for security problems that we need to be solving these days. Uh, that's cloud access security broker, by the way. Um, and then lastly, I'd like to, to thank uh, all the, the exhibitors and sponsors, because just like this conference didn't you know, organize itself, it also didn't pay for itself. So thank you all for uh, your, your, your commitment, your time, your support. Uh, it helps events like this succeed and grow going forward. And so personally, you know, I come from Mexico, and we are a security-specific reseller. Uh, we, we were founded based on what we call five pillars. And that can be a kind of dates when our corporate strategy was set. Once upon a time, I was the, uh, basically the floor being in like a, an IT house model. So we, we have five pillars. Uh, first is that we select, uh, we work with best of breed partners in every area that, that we operate in the settlement. And so that, that gives me the latitude where it's not like, you know, just, just a worker and we're going to sell you whatever Cisco and it should be answering your call. You know, I'm out, I'm meeting with, with companies, I'm out at RSA, there are over 900 exhibitors this year. And I tried to talk to all of them to figure out, uh, you know, who, who was solving problems that they weren't aware of, or <coughs> we, we wanted to introduce to people because we felt they were doing great things. Uh, along with that is for some of our more important partners, we provide level one level two support. Uh, we provide engineering services for uh, analysis for, uh, we, we do assessment, pen testing, we also do deployment services, upgrades. Uh, we can work with you, whether you need us to plan, manage, deploy your environment, come into a break, fix, troubleshooting, whatever it might be, we can do that. And I'm you know, very proud to say that uh, you know, my team has some of the best engineers I've ever had the privilege of working with. Uh, we provide training and offer us a training center for a number of our partners. And, uh, and then finally, along with that is that we, we have managed services available. So there's a lot of organizations who simply cannot have, get the resources, don't have the time to monitor their security tools, they don't have the resources to manage those security tools, and we can do that for those. And that, that's really, I mean, probably one of the great challenges of security today is resource shortages. And, you know, it's the, one of the, Interesting problems we run into is that nobody ever seems to be able If you've got enough money, you probably can't get the people you need to actually effectively employ and utilize the tools that someone gave you the budget to buy. If you've got enough people, you're still going to find that you don't have enough. And so everything comes down to this shortage of time. And whether that is the time to get all done, the time to detect when things are going wrong for rails, whether it's an uh, outage occurring, it is uh, something bad happening that's indicative of a breach, and then once you detect something going on, time to respond before damage is done. And 
we, we see this every year, the, uh, the Verizon data breach report comes out and they talk about how uh, incidents and breaches occur in time frames of, you know, depending on what it is, minutes to hours to maybe days. And detection and response frequently runs days to weeks to months. And so anything that you know we, we can do to help close that gap between those two numbers is going to help us as <coughs> practitioners to be better at our jobs to basically be more valuable to our organization. And so one of the things that, that we're looking at now are identifying tools that are you know, friendly towards that automation of orchestration, that ability to uh, detect with very low false positive rates so that then you can have them initiate response to integration with other tools. And so that, that brings me to our first partner that I'd like to have up here today is Mike Drummond from Park Black. They've been a real leader in forward thinking API integration of partners. And uh, so he's going to tell us a little bit about how Park and Black is able to you know, add value in that scenario. And so Mike, you take it away. Uh, it can manage multiple machines, you can do more uh, with, with, with those GUI. 
week. And uh, why do the ministries use it? Uh, they use it for task automations such as uh, LDAP, uh, you know, user management, file management, service management, and as you, it's, as you can't see up here, um, you, you would be able to see uh, that it's, it's available in uh, more of the latest uh, Windows version. If you want to uh, you know, make it more secure, you want to make sure you have the, the latest version, version 3. <coughs> And why is it powerful to an attacker? Well, it's on the machine, right? Uh, which is the main thing. And you don't have to crown any executables, anything to that effect, to actually load the, uh, the power shell, right? <coughs> so we can uh, you know, collect intelligence, we can run applications, we can basically do all the uh, Monday tasks we want to on the, uh, on the device we want to. So it allows the attacker to have a two toolbox and allows them to live off the land, right? So uh, ultimately, what that, that gives us is the ability to uh, basically have a Swiss Army knife approach, as I have up here, uh, where uh, we can do uh, you know, DLL injections, I can run applications, I can uh, grab data off the user's machine, I can do all that just by leveraging uh, PowerShell on the user's machine. And then, uh, just to, to build on that, is uh, PowerShell is trusted and digitally signed by Microsoft. So, uh, in most scenarios, if you ask a application that's, um, or a, a solution that's a scripting tool that um, is trusted by Microsoft, uh, traditional antivirus will take pay no attention to PowerShell, it's not an attacker tool, and that doesn't mean that PowerShell is bad. In fact, since those years, uh, many of the ministries uh, rely on it. Just like you know, the administration rely on similar tools for decades. However, we need better mechanisms to detect and prevent malicious use of our power shell. And I'm going to go ahead and migrate into my uh, my demonstration here. Uh, but uh, just keep, keep in mind that uh, here are just a few of the different um, uh, excuse me, malware that leverages PowerShell. Hi folks, Alan Geek here. Unfortunately, we had a bit of a video snafu and we have no audio until about the 43 minute mark. Sorry for the inconvenience.
So if after I've established a baseline of kind of my activity, if I start seeing a whole ton of HTTP redirects, another good case of, hey, it might be an anomalous condition here that we might want to investigate. Uh, other things, DNS response information, uh, where I can then basically extract based upon what we see across the network, uh, a records, a, 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 a records, now. C name kind of records. Where are we trying to get, for instance, from a DNS perspective? What are the response codes from DNS? The same thing. And also then, if I see kind of a larger level of uh, escalation of, of, of DNS response codes in short time to blue values, it would be a pretty good indication of a, either a denial of service attack on those DNS servers, or somebody that actually injected themselves in that whole DNS chain. Including stuff like uh, being able to extract information off that network, SSL certificate information. Who is the certificate of for it? Who issued it? Was it a self-signed certificate? What is the certificate expiration date? All these things can be very valuable clues based upon, now what's the key size? All these can be very valuable clues as to is there sort of anomalous activity happening that's going to cross that net? So those are some additional things. Sometimes I think you can actually extract. Uh, including essentially things like user logging and domain information. So being able to actually snoop uh, Kerberos traffic. Give you that high level information, present, uh, present that over to a tool. So how do we use it? How do we actually use it? Uh, to get the use model then would be uh, enable to deploy the use of metadata, right? To kind of get at least a high level activity of what's going on here. And then, hey, we're back. Thank you. So what would we use this for basically, right? It's to use that metadata for really fast approximation. Hey, there's something strange going on, right? And I've been able to see this just like when I got the alerts from my daughter when she was out of the Bahamas, right? High level information then to kind of get and identify some anomalous activity. Then essentially then do full packet screen captures to get down into the weeds, right? And, and what's valuable then is if you have an architecture that I mean, kind of that whole that whole theme of one of the ways that we also attack this problem is through the use of automation. So what if I have the ability to first of all generate that uh, network metadata and have the ability through a program uh, programmatic interface then is to actually based upon something that I see in my analytics tool actually dynamically fire off a packet capture in the environment to get the deeper data that I need to solve the problem. Well, that's what you have with actually the Gigamon Gigasecure uh, Giga platform. So essentially, what we, here's what we do with Gigamon. Is we allow you to basically take data, regardless of where it is, if it's a physical network, if it's traffic inside a host somewhere in the virtualized environment, if it's a cloud application, for instance, it's in the AWS cloud, that's a great example. Bring that into our fabric, filter, forward that to a number of tools that need to consume packets. And that can be tools, security tools, once again, they can be out of band, they can essentially be inline as well, we provide some inline bypass architecture, the you to meet that right tool, but not sacrifice the availability of the, the availability and performance of the network. But more importantly then, what you, we use a specific feature here as our metadata engine. And that's our ability, uh, essentially then, to generate NetFlow and IT fix extensions. So here's how we have implemented this whole metadata story. Because if you know, for instance, particularly with NetFlow version 9, and then also with IT fix, those are template-based architectures. Right, you create a template of a basic that says, hey, here's the type of data I'm going to send you, and you send it the data. Right? So what Gigamon has done is actually created extensions with both NetFlow and IT Fix that can capture exactly that same type of information that we've been talking about earlier. Uh, essentially. Things like, once again, what's the HTTP response code? What are the URLs? 
What's the DNS information? SSL certificate information, uh, specifically. So we use this, once again, as that metadata engine that essentially then can feed an analytic tool. And I'll actually, we'll talk a little bit about it. There's a couple partners already that we work with that can accept these feeds. Uh, and then, essentially then, uh, we've got some others that are in development as well. So this whole vector model is essentially you take that high level data, we can generate that high level data. And oh, by the way, getting back to that whole automation aspect, the Gigamon Giga Secure platform basically has an integration point with it. We have an API associated with that. So what that would allow you to do from an automation perspective, this is actually what something uh, with some folks have already done as well. Is for instance, they use that API with Splunk to where uh, they pick a, a situation more specifically than not like Splunk, but the Splunk uh, app for stream. So what happens is then, right? Splunk's getting all this wonderful data, right? Wonderful data from, uh, for instance, uh, from, from log file information from their Splunk forwarders. It's, it's a great example. They get all this data in. They use you do some correlation within Splunk, and then if they determine that it's a anomalous situation, what they can do then is reach into our visibility fabric and create a specific filter for the thing that they need to investigate. That's really super automation for that, right? So that's kind of that whole concept. Uh, essentially, of the uh, of, of how we build metadata, essentially. Okay, so it's done through the Gigamon Giga Secure platform with our metadata or an OIP fix uh, extension. Yeah. I actually had a short video here, uh, but I know we're kind of running across, running up against the, kind of the time clock here. Uh, I have this actually presentation up on SlideShare. So if you actually want to see how this works in action, go to slideshare.net, search for the keywords Gigamon Metadata. And we'll give you a short demonstration of how this will work for a specific type of metadata. In this case, uh, the information we can get from SSL certificate information. Uh, and also, more importantly, how that works in conjunction with SLUF. So we walk through a very quick scenario of, hey, Here's what we've detected from a knowledge standpoint, and here's some sort of the investigation that, that takes place. Great Nifty video. I encourage you to go out and go check it out when you have, when you have a chance. Right? So from a datamon perspective, who's actually writing to these extensions that we've created from a home pro perspective? Well, we already have Clipster, for instance. We already have Splunk. Uh, like I said, you'll see the example of Splunk on, on the video as well. Uh, a number of those folks that are actually in development, you should be able to see those extensions uh, in their products uh, within the next few months or so. Presidents. So, a wide variety of vendors uh, which are writing to these extensions. You know, by the way, one of the things that we're also doing as well is we're, we're continually adding to those extensions. So, things like extracting the Kerberos information, something that we have under development which will be available on our next product site. And then the other thing as well is that you also have some other extensions you think you'd like to, to, to actually have rolled into our product. We'd love to hear from you as well in terms of, hey, what else sort of makes sense? So if you get a chance, you know, go by, stop by. Um, we'll be here pretty much the entire day. We'd love to kind of talk and chat with you, right? So in some, right, what we need is basically because of this sort of speed and volume of data, right? We need to begin to move to kind of have analytic tools and basically bring in and, and match and triangulate intent, the bad stuff, with context, the normal, the good stuff. Basically, the way to do that then would be through network based metadata. But then, also more importantly, is to have an open programmable platform that allows you to actually, once you, you feed that metadata, allow you to do and take some action for deeper investigation. And quite frankly, that's what the Gigamon Giga Secure platform allows you to do. So thanks and, uh, once again. Like I mentioned, is we have the presentation up on uh, SlideShare. Uh, a couple of URLs here as well. We'll be here the rest of the day as well. 
Um, thanks a lot, and I uh, hope to chat with you later. Thank you.